This week on Maker Update, the art of conversation, Halloween contest season, a tombstone with a twist, and a bright idea on pet portraits. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update, the show where we update you on cool things makers are making. I hope you're doing well and feeling some Halloween inspiration trickling in. I have a fun show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. On his blog and YouTube channel, Christopher Moravic shows how he built this digital art display that generates images based on nearby conversations. I mean, if your devices are already listening to you, you may as well get something fun out of it. This is definitely a project where the creativity is in the coding. The hardware is just a Raspberry Pi with a microphone hat stacked on top. On the software side, he had a bunch of hoops to jump through. First, there's a loop where it's just listening for conversations and recording the audio. Then to be able to understand what's being said, it has to send the audio over to OpenAI's Whisper API for transcription. But you can't make an image just from conversation text. So next he runs it through GPT-4, which distills the conversation down to a specific theme and creates the kinds of prompts needed for image generation. Finally, it gets kicked over to Stable Diffusion to generate an image that is pulled down to the Raspberry Pi and displayed on the TV. Maybe it's a painting of a chicken with a can of beer after it overheard you talking about dinner plans, or maybe it's an illustration of a two-headed unicorn, only the second head is in an unfortunate location. Of course, some of these illustrations really require some explanation. So Christopher added an e-ink screen underneath the TV that displays the prompt that the AI sent over to Stable Diffusion. It's a really fun idea. You can find a link in the description for more details. Now for some news, Halloween season is also Halloween contest season. So if you're working on a fun costume or prop or decoration this year, consider submitting it to one or both of these contests. First, there's the Hackaday Halloween contest sponsored by DigiKey and Arduino. This one runs until Halloween night and project submissions really need to have some kind of electronics angle in order to be considered. Instructables is running their own Halloween contest alongside a first time authors contest. So if you've never submitted an Instructable before and you've got a Halloween project to share, you've got two ways to win here. For these, the deadline ends on November 13th. So if you're working on your Halloween project right up until the last minute, you still have some time to document it and submit it after Halloween is over. More projects, some Halloween inspiration from the Ruiz brothers on Adafruit. They'll show you how they converted this off the shelf foam tombstone into an interactive prop. Not only do they give it some digital signage so that you can add and update multiple epitaphs, but a motion sensor triggers lights and sounds and this creepy 3D printed crow. This is really one of those projects that you can borrow an idea or two from. Maybe you just want to animate some creepy props when someone gets close. Maybe you just want to add sound and lighting effects to some basic Halloween decorations. Just adjust the code for your needs. One 3D printing technique that doesn't get the airtime it used to is creating lithophanes. This is a way to essentially embed images into a 3D printed surface by varying the thickness of a model and shining light through it. So I was glad to see the technique revisited in this new guide by Rabbit Creek. They show you how to create or modify lighting fixtures so that you can mount a lithophane in front to diffuse the light. Specifically, they're turning their lights into little pet portraits, but again, thinking in a Halloween mindset, I bet you could use this to spook up the lights around your home. Now for some tips and tools. If you're interested in making some of that extra spooky ground hugging fog for Halloween, there are a few ways to go about it. You could go with dry ice or create a chiller box for a fog machine, but there's a third option I hadn't seen done before. On Instructables, Wannabe Mad Size shows how you can use large arrays of atomizer discs to create low-lying fog vapor from ordinary water. These are the big brother of the little pond fogger devices you'll sometimes find in water features and aromatherapy diffusers. For something that's fog machine comparable, you'll want a 10 to 12 inch atomizer. Expect to pay around $100. And these may be a little too cute for Halloween, but check out these 3D printed zipper pull designs by WhatUp on printables. The first one I saw was this Pac-Man ghost design. 
There's a spot for gluing in small magnets so that the two sides latch together. He applies the same idea to this Miyazaki-inspired soot sprite design. In both cases, googly eyes are an essential ingredient. Could make a great gift idea too. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, Zach the Bite Size Engineer has a new video up that covers the basics of how to coordinate an electronics project that requires multiple voltage levels. Does your main microcontroller board need 5 volts but your connected sensor can't handle more than 3.3? Is it just about board power or are your logic levels sending different voltages too? These are common problems and Zach outlines some of the most common solutions. Check it out. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment if you like. A big thanks to DigiKey for making this show possible and thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.